guys uh, this is a video to show you the solutions of this paper this is a 2007 May June paper uh, it's a core paper for the ones who do core but it can also be helpful for the ones that do extend it and before we start uh, just click on the subscribe button so that you won't miss any of our future videos in of our future papers that we are going to do we are going to cover both uh, the extended and the core uh, syllabus and also the AS and the ALA for mathematics for Cambridge and all other examples okay so if you have any questions you are free to comment on them to put your questions on the comments so that we can uh, um, answer you we can get back to you with your, your answer okay so now let's start okay so the first question is that one there number one so it says I write uh, zero point 0716 correct to two significant figures okay so to be 0 0.72 because you count from the first non zero number which is seven so it means you've got one two so it means you look at the this term then if this is bigger than five so it means now you add a um, a one here to make it two so that's why we said here it's 0 0.072 okay then the next one so the answer there it will be one minus the probability that uh, she will win a next match so it will be minus one minus 0 0.85 which will be equal to 0 0.15 so it will be 0 0.1 five okay okay and then this one the next one here this one you just punch into your calculator so it's a uh, square root of 120 plus 3.8 squared minus uh, 2.5 minus 25 minus 25 so on my calculator there I'm getting that number that big number there so if you go back now to the first page where you will be having instructions there so here it says um, if the degree of accuracy if the degree of accuracy uh, is not specified in the question and if the answer is not exact give the answer to three significant figures okay so it means now here yeah, the degree is not uh, satisfied it's not it's not stated so it means now we, we use the, the three significant figures so here you can say this is uh, 0 0.3844 so it means it will become 0 0.394 394 okay then the next one So yeah, it says I work out 85 cents as a percentage of uh, two dollars uh, three cents. So the first thing is to convert this two dollars three cents into cents. So it means uh, two dollars three cents is is equal to two hundred and three, since uh, there are hundred cents in every dollar. So these are now in cents. So to convert now 85 cents into percentage, now you say 85 over two zero three times 100 percent. And then you just put that into the calculator. It will be 85 divided by 203. The answer that you get, you multiply by 100. So here I'm getting 41.87. So using the this significant rule, it will be 41.9. So 41.9 percent. The percentage is there, so there's no need for me to root, to put another percentage uh, symbol. So I'll just leave it as, like this. Okay, so number five now. It says change uh, 6,200 square centimeters into uh, square meters. So the ratio is uh, one square centimeter is equal to 0 0.0001 square meters. And then here we've got uh, 6,200. 
obviously this will be a bigger number so you are expecting a, a bigger number here so it will be 6200 over 1 times 0 0.0001 to get the amount in in the square meters so now we punch that into our calculator so it will be 6200 times 0 0.00 zero one so it means they will get zero point six two so it will be zero point six two square meters okay then we go to the next one it says uh factorize fourteen x minus twelve y so here we look for the common uh factor here of these two terms so it means here we've got x here we've got y so it means you don't have any um common factors on the letters but on the numbers now here is 14 and here is 21 so it means 7 can be our common factor here so you say 7 here then you open brackets and then 7 into 14x that will be 2x minus uh, 7 into 21 y it will be uh, 3y so this will be your answer so it will be 7 factor of 2x minus 3y that will be your, your final answer okay then let's go now to the next page okay so we are given that table there it says um, the temperature um, the daily temperature in, in degrees celsius at 3 p.m in a town is shown below so you've got from monday to sunday then the first question which day had the coldest temperature so if you look at the table here, you can see that the smallest number is negative four so it means the coldest day was friday so we write our friday here our friday and then b it says we call the difference in, in the temperature on friday and a saturday so saturday it was three and then on friday it was negative five so it will be three minus minus four so this one now it will be three plus four that will give us a difference of seven degrees celsius okay and then the following one says um write these numbers in order of size smallest first so for you to be able not to convey these numbers you're supposed to to convert all of them into decimal so you'll be using a calculator so the first one is 7 divided by 22 that will be equal to 0 0.318 so you write underneath 0 0.318 like this and then the next one it will be just 0 0.3 and then converting it percentage now you divide by 100 so it will be 33 divided by 100 that will be 0 0.33 0 0.33 and then this one the last one is 1 over 3 so it's 1 divided by 3 that will give you 0 0.333 recurring like this okay so from here now we can determine which one is the smallest so by looking at these three you can see that 0 0.3 here is the one that is the smallest so you write your 0 0.3 here and then you, you can cancel it so that you won't repeat it then the next one now if you look at this one now here you can see that this is 0 0.31 so it means it's smaller than these ones so it means the next number will be 7 over 22 and then followed by this one which, which only has one three so it means the one with the recurring will be bigger than this one so here you'll be having 0 point uh you write it as 33 percent 33 percent and then lastly you write your one over three okay so that's it then the next one is um the shape of up the shape above is a rhombus this one here so it means all the sides are equal and then this angle and that angle is equal that angle then that angle is equal as well okay then it says draw the line of symmetry on the shape so the line of symmetry this the rhombus on is only two you've got this one and another one that goes this way so those are the two lines of symmetry that you'll be having on your rhombus okay Okay, and then this one says um, write 0 0.03 as a percentage so for you to convert a, a decimal into a percentage you just multiply that uh, decimal by 100 percent so you be it will be 0 0.03 times 100 percent then you just put this into your calculator 0 0.03 times 100 you get three percent so it means your answer will be three 
like that and then the next one write 37 percent as a fraction so if it's percentage it means it's out of 100 so you say 37 over 100 so 37 is, there are no factors here 37 is a is a prime number so it means your your fraction will be 37 over 100 okay then the next one says um find the value of 5a minus 5 3 minus 3b when a is equal to 7 and b is equal to negative 1 so what it means now you're putting the value of 7 where there was a and the value of b which is now negative 2 where there was b so it would be 5 times 7 minus 3 times negative 2 so 5 times 7 is 35 and then minus 3 times minus 2 it would be positive uh, 6 every time you multiply a negative number and a negative number the answer will be positive so now you've got uh, 35 plus 6 which is equal to 41 okay and then the next one now these are angles so it says um, the diagram shows a straight line a straight line intersecting two parallel lines so it means these are your two parallel lines and then find the value of p and the value of q so let's start with p so p you can see that p and this 70 they are on a straight line so it means they are supposed to add up to 180 so p will be equal to 180 degrees minus 70 degrees so this will give you 110 degrees so p is 100, 110 degrees okay and then for q now is you can see you can derive it this way you can say this and this angle here these are vertically opposite angles so it means this would be equal to 70 and then this angle as well would be equal to this angle these are called f angles so it means q would be 70 degrees so you write your 70 degrees like this so that's all and then you get all your full marks and then the next one now it says i solve that equation there so when you're solving an equation here you've got x so it means you're supposed to put all the other terms on one side and on the on the other side you should only remain with x so here we can move this one to that side first so here our one is positive when it goes to the other side it will become negative so it will be it will be 2 minus x minus 1 is equal to 5x and then the next step now will be moving this x to the other side so we'll be having 2 minus 1 is equal to 5x plus x. So this x on this side now is, is, is positive because here it was negative. So whenever a term crosses the, crosses the other side of the equal sign, it will change its sign. And then now we simplify 2 minus 1, then it will be 1, which is equal to 5x plus x. This is equal to 6x. And then to remove this 6, we divide both sides by 6. So it means that our x will be equal to... 1 over 6 so that's our answer 1 over 6 okay okay then now let's go to the next one so it's it says now i write down uh, 0 0.0605 in standard form that would be equal to 6 Point, uh, zero 0.05 times 10 to the power negative 2 okay then it says uh, calculate that one uh, 0 0.1 times uh, 5.1 times 10 to the power 4 give you answer in standard form so the first thing is do is you ignore this one now you subtract you multiply 0 0.01 times that one that would be equal to 0 0.1 times 5.1 that would be 0 0.51 times 10 to the power 4. And then you're also supposed to move this comma now to this side. So it means that the power here will change. So it will become 5.1 times 10 to the power 3. So that would be your answer. Uh, 5.1 times 10 to the power 3 like that. Okay. And then the next one. It says the mass m the mass m kilograms of a cage is 2.7 uh, kgs correct to one decimal place complete the statement above about the mass m 
So the statement they is looking for, we, we are supposed to write the lower bound or the upper bound. What do you mean by the, by the lower bound? The lower bound is the lowest number that when it is rounded off, it will give us 2.7. So yes, to one decimal place. So it means the lower bound will be 2.65. So it means the upper bound will be 2.75. So you can see that this this uh, number here 2.65 can become m but this one is just a step ahead of the the term that can become uh, m so if you take for for example 2.74 if you run that to one decimal place you see that it will become 2.7 that's why we put 2.75 here okay and then the next one now these are trigonometric ratios this is uh, a right angle triangle and then it says calculate the value of x so for this one now use the rule soca so katoa so this is a sign is equal to opposite of opposite of hypotenuse cos is equal to adjacent of hypotenuse and tan is equal to opposite over uh, over adjacent so we've got this angle here so it means you've got the opposite side and then uh, in the hypotenuse so it means we use the sign on the sign uh, ratio so sin x will be equal to 4 over 7 so it means now x will be equal to x sine of x sine of 4 over 7. Now you go to calculator and then you say x sine is second function sine. And then you put your fraction that's 4 over 7. So it means our angle there is 13 is 34.8. So we've got 34.8 degrees. Okay. Okay, number 17 here it says um, find the gradient of line AB so the gradient of line AB is then it will be the change in the vertical direction the vertical steps over change in, um, in the horizontal steps so it means here you can see from here this point to this point here it was from it's from 10 it's from it started at 1 and ended on on 10 so you can say gradient is equal to 10 minus 1 and then x is added on 3 but started from 0 so over 3 minus 0 and then you solve this one because it's called the change in y over the change in x this will be equal to 9 over 3 which is equal to 3 so it means our gradient will be 3 okay then we go to the next one So these are now these are similar uh, shapes. So it says triangle ABC and DEC, DEF are similar. Find the length of EF. So EF is this one. So it means we can get now the ratios of the sides using these sides. Because if the shapes are similar, it means the corresponding sides will be having a ratio. Okay. So it means now it will be 15 s to 5. And then this ratio can be simplified to 3 s to 1. And then now we are looking for 16.5. So it means here we are expecting a bigger number here. So it will be uh, 16.5 over 3 times 10 to 1. Then now we use our calculator to say uh, 16.5 divided by 3 times 1. So it means our side will be 5.5. centimeters the centimeters already there so there's no need for us to do the repetition of that one okay and then number 19 number 19 that says the exchange rates um, between dollars and euros is one is to that one one is to one dollar one euro is to one dollar 158 okay and then um, calculate change uh, first, first, uh, felicity uh, changes 4,900 euros into dollars. We out how many dollars he receives. Okay, so the first thing is you write the ratio. So it's 1 is to 1.158. And then what about what about uh, 6 
what about um, four nine hundred? So here, obviously, we're expecting a a bigger number. Here. So it means it will be four nine hundred over one times one point five one point one five eight. So we put that in your calculator. Uh, four nine hundred times one point one five eight. That would be uh, $5,674.20 dollars. So that would be the equivalent of 1,400 euros. Okay. Okay, and then the next one, it says, um, Reggie changes 200, 200, uh, 2,895 into euros. So now, we start by our ratio 1 is to 1.158 now what about uh, 2895 so it means here as well we are, we are, look, we are expecting a, a bigger number so it means it will be 2895 over 1.158 times 1 so now we punch that into our calculator uh, 2895 divided by 1.158 that would be equal to 2500 so that would be the equivalence in euros 2500 euros okay then now we go to number 20 okay so this one now uh, this is a triangle in a semicircle so it means this one is a right angle this one this angle here is a right angle because this is a this is a triangle in a semicircle because this is the diameter okay so now the question says uh, find angle a angle bac so angle bac is this angle here okay but remember that this line here is a tangent so it means this whole angle this whole angle here is a right angle as well because the, uh, the tangent it makes a right angle with them with the radius so it means to get this angle BAC BAC here will be equal to 90 degrees minus 42 which will, which will give us 48 so it means BAC will be equal to 48 degrees okay and then B this angle ABC. So here we've got 48 here and here we've got 90. And then remember that the all the angles now in a triangle they add up to 180. So it means this angle will be equal to 180 minus this one minus that one. So angle BAC ABC will be equal to 180 minus 48 plus 90. So this will be equal to 180 minus um, one minus 138 that would be equal to 42 degrees so that would be our answer then 42 degrees okay and then number 21 it says um, without using a calculator calculate 5 over 6 minus 1 over 2 Show all your steps uh, of your working and give your answer as a fraction in its lowest term. So we've got uh, 5 over 6 minus 1 over 2. So it means for us to be able to subtract fractions, you're supposed to put this under one denominator. So you can see that you've got 6, you've got 2. So it means our common denominator is 6. And then 6 into 6 is 1 times 5. So here we'll be having 5. Minus 2 into 6 is 3 times 1. That would be... That would be 3. So, and then 5 minus 3, it is equal to 2 over 6. And then now we simplify this fraction now. So, it means here we can divide by 2. 2 into 2 is 1. 2 into uh, 6 is um, 3. So, it means our answer would be 1 over 3. Okay. And then the next one, it says... Um, show that 4 and 1 over 6 times 1 and 4 over 5 is equal to that one so the first thing that we do is we convert those mixed numbers into fractions so 4 and 1 over 6 will be equal to 
4 times 6 is 24 plus 1, it will be 25 over 6. And then converting 1 times 1 and uh, 4 over 5, it will be 5 times 1, 5 plus 4, it will be equal to 9 over 5. And then now I can do the multiplication. So we've got 25 over 6 times 9 over 5. So you can say 5 into 5 is 1, 5 into 25 yeah, is 5. And then uh, 3 into 3 into 6 is 2, and then 3 into 9 is 3, and then 5 times 3 is 15, and then 2 times 1 is 2. So we've got 2, we've got 15 over 2. Now we to convert this back now to mixed numbers so that it can be similar to this one. So 2 into 15, it goes into 14, 7, seven times. So you've got 7 remainder, 1 here over 2. So it means here it is shown. We've shown that this is equal to this one. So because here we found that the answer is 7 and 7 and 1 half. Okay. Okay, and then now number 22. Number 22 here says uh, each diagram shows a net of a solid. Uh, write down the mathematical name for each. So you can see the first one there, that's a pyramid with it with a square base. So you can just write pyramid. Pyramid. And then the next one then, this size here, they are triangles. So but this is a prism. So it means this is a triangular prism. Triangular prism. Okay, and then B, B it says the cross-sectional area of this uh, prism is a trapezium. Calculate the volume of the prism. So to get the, to get the volume now of, the, of any prism, it's uh, base area, the area of this trapezium, times the length, this length, times L. So let's start by calculating now the area of this trapezium. So to get the area of the trapezium being, it will be equal to A half, a plus b where a plus b are are the parallel lines this side and that side times the height which is five so now we put our values to say half times uh, eight plus fourteen times eighteen so eight plus fourteen is twenty two divided by two is eleven times eighteen and then eighteen times eleven is what one ninety eight one 98 and then now we take this value of b and put it into this into this formula of volume that is uh, base area times length so now we're saying 198 times 18 to get the volume now and then we'll get three five six four that will be the volume of the whole prism And then number 23. Okay, number 23 says a Pablo is uh, 6400 to invest in one of these of this savings account. Plan A pays uh, compound interest at a rate of 4% per year. Plan B pays simple interest at a rate of 4% per year. Okay. Then Pablo invests uh, 6400 for three years. Calculate how much you will receive uh, from plan A than uh, from plan B, give you answer correct to, uh, to two decimal places. Okay, let's start with the simple interest. So for a simple interest, the interest I will be equal to P uh, T over 100. Where P is the principal amount, which is 1600, R is the rate, which is 4%, and T is the time, which is 3 years. So let's put our values. So we've got 1600 times the rate which is uh, four percent times the time which is three over hundred and then so there it will be uh, let's put that into calculator sixteen four hundred times four times three I'm getting one nine six eight hundred over one hundred so this will be one nine six eight dollars that will be the interest after three years 
okay and then this is for plan b this one and then now let's calculate for plan a which is compound interest so for compound interest now um, it will be i will be equal to the the, the um, will be equal to the um, the principal amount is 16 400 600 uh, times 1.04 to the power 3 which is equal to so this is the total amount that you will get interest plus the principal amount so it will be 16400 times 1.04 to the power 3 so it means after 3 years you get eighteen thousand four hundred and forty seven point seven six so if you go if you go back now to plan b to plan b a the interest here was uh one thousand nine hundred and sixty eight so it means now the total the interest plus the principal amount will be equal to if you add uh one nine six eight plus uh sixteen four hundred you get one eight three six eight so this is the amount that you get using simple interest and then this one is the amount that you get using compound interest so now the question was asking a calculator how much more you will receive from plan a than from plan b so it means now plan a we just subtract the value that you get from plan b from the one that you get from plan a so it will be one eight four four seven point six point seven six minus one eight three six eight so it means the difference is seven nine point seven six because here the answer says give your answer correct to two decimal places so this answer is already in two decimal places so there you have it that's your you get your five marks okay then number 24 number four number 24 says work out the area of a circle with radius six centimeters so the formula to, cal to calculate now the area of a circle is equal to pi times radius squared so this will be equal to pi times six squared so we just put that in the calculator pi is there already times six squared that will be equal to one one three one one three said so remember on the beginning of the of the question paper it says when the degree is not specified of accuracy you're supposed to leave your answer in in three significant figures so here as well it's not specified so we just leave it as in three significant figures okay and then 24b it says a solid uh, is uh, length 15 centimeters and radius six centimeters calculate the total surface area of the cylinder okay so let's start uh with the surface area of this side so it means here we've got a circle with radius 6 and then the other side as well we've got a circle with radius 6 so let's calculate now first the area of those two circles so area of this say this is a and the other one will be b the surface area of this one so area of a plus b will be equal to 2 times pi radius squared which is 6 here so it would be times 6 squared here i'm saying times 2 because we've got this circle in that circle so it means you're supposed to multiply this that the, the value that you get here times 2 to get the area of both circles so this one we've already calculated it here it will go to 113 so it would be 2 times 113 which would be equal to 2 2 6 square centimeters okay and then now the second step now is to calculate now the area of the curved surface now so you can say you can see if you cut let's say by here this now will become a it, it will become a shape like this okay where this side will be the 15 centimeter side and then this side there will be the uh, circumference of this circle so this will be the circumference so let, now let's calculate now the circumference of that circle so that we can find our width of this shape so to find the circumference it's it's uh, 2 pi times radius that is 2 times pi times our radius 6 so this will be equal to 
that 2 times pi times 6 that will be equal to 37.699 so it means here here we've got um, 37.699 and then to find now the area of this one it will be this side times that side so we multiply that side by 15 for the area so area will be length 37.699 times the width which is 15 and then the answer here I'm getting uh, 565.487 and then now the total service area means now we'll be adding this uh, this value with the value that you got from those two circles so now we add 565.487 plus 226 then our answer will be 791.49 yeah, square centimeters that will be our answer and then you get your four marks so this takes us to the end of this paper so this paper was one hour so you can see that you have done it in less than an hour okay so don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss an offer future uh worked exam papers in other uh, topics that will be covered as well okay bye